Okay, we've all used buttons before. Right, the little tactile push buttons. There we go, that's about the best focus I can get, huh? You know those little guys. Well, you've probably used them within the main part of your program in the void loop area. What we're going to be talking about today is another way that you can use buttons or anything else for that matter. We're going to be talking about an interrupt. So basically I want you to think of an interrupt as anything that the processor, in this case the uh, you know the Atmel, Atmel uh, Atmega 328P, looks for on every clock cycle. Now on the Arduino Uno and on the Nano, you have um, hardware interrupts that are available on digital pins two and three. But, <laughs> in the tradition of computers and all technical jargon having to be harder than it actually is, D2 is interrupt 0 and D3 is interrupt, interrupt 1. So we're going to attach one pin from this tactile push button to D2. Or interrupt 0. We are going to attach the other side of our button to ground. Now I know I've talked about this before but if you look very closely at how I have the button wired you can see that I'm on the upper left corner and the lower right corner. I think that's focused better. Always diagonally. If you're always diagonally, you'll never miswire your button. Just something to keep in mind. All right, now let's go over to the PC and look at the programming for doing what's called attaching and interrupt. All right, let's um, set up here. What we've done here is we set pin mode to input pull up. And what that means is it sets this pin to a logic high. So as long as the button that is attached to that pin is not being pressed, we have a logic high. Okay? And then we're going to turn on our serial comms so we can see what happens. All right, now we're going to come down here. We're going to say integer button push equals digital read 2. And then we'll say serial print line so we get a carriage return at the end of it. Button push and we'll add a small delay 500 milliseconds okay so what we've done here is every time that button is pressed our logic high which we set here becomes a logic low all right so if we output that to the serial window, what you're going to see is a 1. It's just going to print 1s, one's, 1s, one's, one, 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 1, until you press the button. When you press the button, you're going to get a 0. And then when you release it, it's going to print a 1 again. Now that's called polling. And that is the easy way to check for a button press. But here's the thing. If you've got you know, you know, 100 more lines of code here, it is only going to check for that button press when it gets to the right here. 
So you could be missing a whole lot of button presses. But there is an easier way to do it. And that's the interrupt. Now, I'm going to show you real quick what the interrupt looks like. So let's jump back over to the lab table. And I'm going to hook up our little contraption to the oscilloscope. And then we'll come back over here. All right, I've got our little setup here hooked up to the oscilloscope. And it's set for DC mode. So what you see here is our logic high, which is what the uh, input pull-up has done. Now when I press the button, the input goes low. Okay? Now let's see if I can change the trigger to single shot. Nope. I was trying to be able to show you the, you see the line that appears? That's the falling line. And that's what we're triggering on. Okay. All right. So now you've actually seen what that logic high and logic low look like in um, response to a button being pressed. So. Now I'm going to show you how to use the interrupt. And remember, the interrupt checks that pin every clock cycle, no matter what is going on here in your loop, okay? No matter what kind of code is going on in this area down through here, that interrupt is being checked every single time. So the way we're going to do that is we are going to do attach interrupt. And we're going to put that up here in our setup. So we say attach interrupt okay now that's a function and it requires three things it needs to know what interrupt that we're talking about now remember what we said in the beginning the uno and the nano have two hardware interrupts interrupt zero and interrupt one which are attached to pins digital two and digital three we're hooked to digital two so that is interrupt zero all right, so attach an interrupt to pin zero. And then we need to call a function. So we're going to call our function bang. And then we need to know when to call it. We have three choices, rising, falling. Oh, I'm sorry, we have four choices, rising, falling, change, and low. So rising, if we go from low to high, that's going to trigger the interrupt. Falling, we go from high to low, that's going to trigger the interrupt. Change, it doesn't care. Either way, it's going to trigger the interrupt. And low, it's going to only going to trigger the interrupt on a logic low. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to trigger it on whoops, falling. Because we are at a logic high, and when we press the button, we're going to go to a logic zero, and that's going to create a falling edge. And that's going to that's going to call our interrupt, which we call bang, right? So now we need to create the function, the interrupt function, called bang. So we'll say void, how we that's how we start our functions. Bang. That's our function and a curly bracket. And then what do we want it to do? Well, we're going to do the same thing we did before. Serial dot print line. But we're going to say bang. <laughs> we're not going to say bnag. We are going to say bang in that function. And that's it. That's our function. And that's it. That's our program. Look down here in your in your void loop. What's going on here? There is no code here. We've written no code, but once that interrupt is attached, 
it's always going to be looking for every clock cycle. It's like looking over its shoulder going, now, now, now. So when it sees that button press, it is going to trigger. So let's plug in the Arduino. I've already sent the code. So I'm going to open the serial monitor here for us. I'm going to open the serial monitor. There we go. Let me bring it in here where you can see it. And when I press the button, bang, 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 bang. Now, sometimes you notice we get more than one. Let's reopen the serial monitor here. Bang. 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 Now, see that time we got two. And that is called bounce. Bounce happens because when we press the button, sometimes it's not perfect. Bang. Bang, bang. So there are ways to fix that. You can do it in hardware or you can do it in software. But because this is just an introduction to interrupts, we're not going to deal with that right now. In part two, we're going to create a really simple reaction time game. And in that we're going to have to, uh, well, we don't have to, but we'll talk more about debouncing then. So. I hope you've got a little bit of an understanding of how an interrupt works. You can use it to grab the processor's attention at any point. Because the processor is always looking over its shoulder going, now? Is it now? Is it now? So if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Please share it with your friends or on websites. And if you haven't subscribed yet, what the heck are you waiting for?